For most web developers, Chrome is going to be one of the most used tools within your development stack. This means that any productivity time savings that you can make in Chrome are going to add up. Now, I'm a self-confessed productivity geek. That means that I'm always keeping a regular eye out on what new developer-related extensions are being released. And that's why in this video, I'm going to share with you eight extensions that I know will allow you to work smarter and not harder. So stick around for 10 minutes and you're going to discover some new tools that will save you from hours worth of unneeded tab switching. The first extension that I recommend you check out is Requestly. And Requestly is a super powerful tool and the good news also has a free tier. So Requestly will basically add a proxying debugging tool inside of Chrome for you. This means that when your pages are loading, you can intercept those requests and do different things with them. So instead of me just waffling on and telling you why you should use Requestly, instead, I'm going to show you. Okay, so picture this. I want to create an API that returns Chuck Norris related jokes because I mean, who doesn't like Chuck Norris? So I'm building the accompanying website and you can see that I'm on chucknorris.io now. Now I've got this endpoint joke slash random and you can see that whenever I click on this, get me a new one, I'm going to demo what the API looks like. And you can see in my network request tab here, that every single time I click on this, it's making an XHR fetch request to get a new joke. Now, this is all great. However, what happens if I hadn't built the API yet and I wanted to create the website first? What would I do? So we can fix these types of issues with Requestly. Now, after you've installed it, you'll see this little icon in your toolbox, clicking on it, and you can open the Requestly dashboard. Now from here, we can define a bunch of stuff, but one thing we can do is create rules. And these rules will allow you to modify any single network request made by that page, either incoming or outgoing. So just in terms of modification, we can see that we've got redirects, cancels, we can replace stuff, we can change the HTTP headers, we can add query strings, we can insert scripts, we can even mock an API response. Hmm. So you can see that I've got a rule here called Chuck test. If I turn this on now and we look at the rule, you can see that I'm intercepting REST API requests, which is that XHR request. I can also pick from GraphQL or just normal HTTP if I'm using the desktop version. I've added in my API endpoint, and then in the response body, you can see that I'm mocking the data that I want to be returned to the client. Now, when I go back to my website, when I click on this, you can see that my dummy data that I defined here is now being returned. And this ability to apply rules when pages load is really powerful. So some other examples you might be interested in. What happens if you need to test things and you need to remove a content security policy? Yeah, you could do that. What happens if you're testing an API and you quickly need to pass in a bearer token? Yeah, you could do that. What happens if you just want to test what the Google spider looks like by changing the user agent when the page loads? Yep, you can do all of that as well. And that really does only scratch the surface of some of the things that you might want to do with Requestly. So for example, you might want to build features before a backend API is ready. You might want to test changes directly in production by changing HTTP headers without deployments. It even comes with its own API client, so you could in theory ditch Postman if you really wanted to. Now, in the free tier, you can create 10 rules and have three active at any one time. You can also modify headers, API requests, and responses. You can build a mock server and you can get session replays. Not bad, I'd say, for free. So I recommend you give it a check out. My next recommendation is an extension that's called Visual CSS Editor, and it's amazing. So as you can probably guess from the name, this extension is going to install a real-time visual editor within Chrome for you. And this is going to allow you to inspect and change any web page directly. Now, being able to edit a page using an editor is way quicker compared to trying to manually change things within Chrome DevTools yourself. After you install the extension, you're going to get this little yellow icon in your toolbar. Clicking on that is going to launch the editor. Now on the screen, as I'm moving my mouse around, you can see that there's a little blue box, which is selecting all the different elements that I'm highlighting. And simply clicking on this 
will launch the visual editor and allow me to manipulate that element. So some of the things we can do are change text, font sizes, all that kind of stuff. We can play with the background, give it colors, images. We can play with spacing, so paddings, margins, borders, radiuses. We can position things. We can apply effects like transform, shadows, filters, and a lot more. So now you're armed with this plethora amount of tools, you then got loads of options of how you want things to display. And then once you're happy with your changes, what you can do is at the top, click on this big export button. This is going to give you all the generated CSS that you've created within the editor yourself. You can then simply copy and paste this code into your actual code base and jobs are good. Enough. Aside from this visual editing capability, there's also a bunch of useful inspection tools. So first off, we can do the navigator so we can understand our HTML structure. There's a responsive view so we can see what our design looks like at different breakpoints. There's a ruler so we can measure the distance and pixels between things. There's a wireframe tool. There's also a design information tool so we can understand the CSS selectors. We can understand what the DOM element looks like, accessibility information and all that jazz. So to summarize, I think you should install this because it will help you mock up pages. It'll also help you understand existing pages much quicker compared to doing everything in Chrome DevTools. The next extension is a technology profiler. And I find this really useful for either debugging and understanding what text running on your website, or if you see something on another website that you're interested in, figuring out what it's built with. Now, WAP Analyzer is one of many different technology profilers. I've also reviewed built with and what runs. However, personally, I find WAP Analyzer gives you the best choices and it's got the best UI. So that was definitely a bit of a bold claim. Let's back it up now. So after installing WAP Analyzer, you're going to get this purple icon and clicking on it is going to generate this report. Now, it's probably worth pointing out that WAP Analyzer is free. There is a paid for tier. However, I think you'll get away with the free tier. Now, the report is going to tell you all about the technologies installed on that website. So we've got all the external stuff. So you can see here, we've got the analytics and my heat mapping software. It's got marketing automation in it. You can see that it's also got my JavaScript library. So Modernizer, Al Carousel. You can see what programming language I use to build the website, .NET. You can also see misc information, like it's got an RSS feed. It's got open graph tags. It's got HTTP3 support. You can see that I'm using a CDN. So the next time you need a technology profiler, install this, you won't be disappointed. The next extension is called Session Buddy. Now, if you're anything like me, you'll probably be working on multiple different projects at the same time. Now, when you're working on a project, you'll likely need to have, you know, web pages open, your debugging server, whatever it might be. And each project is going to have different URLs. Now, this is where Session Buddy comes in because it will save the state of your tabs. Saving session with Session Buddy, super simple. Again, you get an icon in the toolbox, unsurprisingly. So click on this, you can see we get the UI and then basically you can click on the windows which are open, click on save and you can say, you know, save session one. Now in the left hand side here, it will automatically back up your sessions for you. Then you can have any of your saved sessions underneath it. So you can see I've got my different projects here and then restoring a session. All you need to do is click on it, click on the window and say open tabs and off you go. Everything's loaded again. It's that simple. This is my development environment. This is my production environment. Can you spot the difference? Over the years, I've wasted so much time when building things, doing work on the wrong environment. And this is where the next extension comes in. And it's called Environment Marker. Sounds really simple, but what happens is once you install it, you get this marker. I can come in here and I can say that this is my dev site. I can give it a red color or green color, actually. Add it on. Boom. Now I'm going to go to production. I'm going to call this production. I'm going to have it red. I'm going to call it prod. Save. Off we go. Now we've got the prod flag. And then now when I'm working on these environments, I've got a quick and easy way to see which site I'm working on so I don't get confused. It's as simple as that. However, it will save you a bunch of time. 
The next extension is a performance related extension and it's called Web Vitals. And this is going to give you a quick report over the performance of any web page. So after you install the plugin, it's basically going to perform a Web Vital check every single time you load a page. This is the reason why I've got a green tick right here because my website is performant. Now let's go on to another website. You can see that this website is less performant because there's a red triangle and you should get some diagnosis information. So the LCP is three seconds. Now, just in terms of the report itself, you're going to get a bunch of useful web vital metrics. So LCP, CLS, FCP, loads of acronyms. Basically, when it comes to performance tweaking, you have everything you need here to improve your web vitals. Within your role, if you constantly need to take screenshots of websites, then Go Full Page is a great tool. After you've installed Go Full Page, you'll get a little icon which looks like this. Go to a website, click on a button. You can see we've got a screen capture in progress. Give it like two or three seconds, and then you'll have the option to either save that page to a PDF, or we can save it as an image, and then we can embed it where we need to. Nice and simple, nice and quick, great plugin. Whenever I seem to be building new features, I always seem to get screwed over by some sort of cache. And this is where the next extension will help, and it's called Hard Refresh. So instead of you having to remember to do a Control Shift R, you're going to get a button in your toolbox, click on it, it's going to do a hard refresh, it's going to clear your cookies, your local storage. This means you're testing on a blank slate. And for me, this is a no brainer to install. And finally, I thought I'd throw in an added bonus extension, which is dev.daily. Now this isn't a programming tool per se. However, after you install it, whenever you open a new tab, you're gonna get a list of all the latest and best dev related articles on the internet. So you log in, you create an account, you say that you're interested in .NET, and then you have a bunch of articles and you can filter by the most popular, most upvoted, the ones with the best discussions. And I use this all the time just to keep updated with what's new while I'm waiting for things to compile. So we've made it to the end of the list and I'm hoping you found one or two hidden gems in there that are gonna get some use out of. Now, before we leave, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. I release a video every single Sunday all about development and productivity tools. So if that's your bag, you know what to do. Also, click on the like, help a brother out. Now, if you do want to learn more about some new Chrome extensions, I've also recorded another video about the best productivity tools in Chrome. The link to that is on screen right now. So click on that. Otherwise, until next Sunday, happy coding.